Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've calculated the general equation to find how long it takes to reach half of its original temperature, and here's the equation that we derived on the previous video, now let's see how long that time actually is for a sphere with the following dimensions and values. We have a sphere of radius 20 centimeters with a density of 8,900 kilograms per, per cubic meter and a specific heat of 900 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. I believe that's copper, if I'm not mistaken. And let's say that we start with an initial temperature of 300 Kelvin because the amount of time that it takes does depend on the original temperature of the object. To make things easy, because we're going to do a few checks, I've also already calculated the mass of this object, which turns out it would be 289 kilograms for a sphere, a solid metal sphere of radius 20 centimeters, so it's a diameter of about a, a well, about. 16 inches or so diameter, uh, about uh, 40 centimeters across. And starting with initial temperature of about room temperature, if you were to place that sphere in space, how long would it take for that sphere to radiate heat so that it would then go down to half of its original temperature? And the results, because I've already worked it out in advance, it turns out is quite remarkable. So let's go take a look at it and see what it looks like. So first we're going to plug this in. So temperature is equal to, uh, temperature as a function, let me go ahead and write that down, as a function where the temperature is equal to one half of its original temperature is equal to, using the equation, seven times the density, times the radius, times the specific heat, divided by nine times the emissivity constant, the Stefan Boltzmann's constant, and the original temperature to the third power. So let's plug in the values and see what we get. So this is seven times, and we'll leave out the units to keep it clean, 8900, radius 0 0.2, specific heat 900, all divided by 9 times 1 times, and the constant there is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, and uh, temperature to the third power, 300 cubed. All right, let's see what that is equal to. Good thing we have calculators. 7 times 8,900. I used to do that with a slide rule. Can you imagine that? Wow, that was a very long time ago. Divided by 9, divided by 5.67 e to the 8 minus, divided by 300, divided by 300 squared equals, and there it is. Wow, 813,900 seconds. Wow. That is an amazing amount of time. You would think that that might happen in a matter of just a minute or two minutes or five minutes or something like that. Intuitively, if you take a metal sphere at 300 Kelvin and you place it out in space where around it the, absolute, the temperature is about zero Kelvin, you wouldn't expect it would take this long for the temperature to drop to half of its original value. Well, let's see now, how many days is that? Because if you divide that by 86,400, because that's the number of seconds in a day, so let's see here, one day divided by 86,400, I guess it's 86,400 seconds in a day. So divide by 86,400, we get 9.4 days. That seems very odd, just very odd. It seems like way too long. And so what I did then is to figure out, well, is that a reasonable value? Well, to do that, to figure that out, is let's see how much heat would be radiated out from a sphere like that to, in the begin with, to begin with. So let's go ahead and take our uh, dQdt equation and figure this out. So this was the answer we got, oh, more than nine days to reach half its original temperature. But using the equation dQdt is equal to E sigma A times T to the fourth power. Let's see how much that is, that is a one. And then sigma is the constant 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. The surface area would be 4 pi times the radius squared. And then the temperature, 300 to the fourth power. So at its original temperature, what would be the rate at which the heat would be emanated from that object? So let's go ahead and calculate that. 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 4 times pi times 0.2 squared and times 300 square square equals 
And there it is, 231 joules, roughly speaking. That would be 231 joules per second, or 231 watts. So at its original temperature of 300 Kelvin, a metal sphere placed out in space would be radiating out. And of course, that metal sphere probably would have to be painted black or something like that because you want to have the emissivity. You want to be able to emanate uh, at the maximum emissivity rate of E equals 1. I guess uh, here we go. Yeah, we used E equals 1. E equals 1 right there. So 231 watts. That's not a lot of heat coming out of that sphere per unit time. And then if you think about how much heat does that sphere contain initially, well, to do that, we can use the following equation. The amount of heat is equal to the mass times C times the temperature. And of course, I've already calculated the mass. So let's go ahead and see how much heat the object has to begin with. So Q is equal to MC times T. That's 289 kilograms. C is 900 and T is equal to 300. So that would be the amount of joules of heat the object would contain to begin with. So let's see how much that is. 289 times 900 times 300. And that would be, wow, let's see here. Let's convert that to that. That would be 78 million. So 78 million joules of heat to begin with. And so half of that, half a Q, would be equal to half of that, that would be equal to 39 million, so 39 times 10 to the sixth joules, and emitting it at a rate of 231 joules per second, how long would it take to get rid of that much heat, presuming that the amount of radiation continues at the constant rate of 231 watts, which of course is not the case. As the sphere cools, the radiation curve would show that less and less heat would be emanated, and so even if we kept emanating at this rate, how long would it take to get rid of this much energy? So the time would be equal to, that would be um, uh, Q divided by the power. So in this case, that would be 39 times 10 to the 6 joules divided by 231 joules per second. As you can see, that at that rate, how long would it take? So first we divide by 2, and then we divide by 231. And at that rate, it would take 169,000 seconds. So time would be equal to 169,000 seconds. And how does that compare to the value that we got? Of course, it's considerably lower, but not that much lower. So this would give credence to that this value seems reasonable because as the temperature drops, and since the rate of emission of heat is a function of temperature to the forward power. As the temperature dropped, the amount of heat being emitted would drop quite a bit, quite fast. And so this would be the rate if it could continue at the same rate, 169,000 seconds, would of course, the fact that it diminishes over time, 813 or 814,000 seconds is no longer that odd. So it is quite surprising that you could take a sphere, a metal sphere at 300 Kelvin room temperature, place it somewhere out in space, far away from the Earth, where there's no heat generation far away from the sun, the sun would be more important, it would still take more than nine days to reach half of its original temperature. That's quite amazing, quite surprising, but that's the way it is in nature. That's how it's done.